What's up, sons? It's Blind Dragon with Son of a Tech once again, and welcome to the ninth finals episode for Mining Rig Wars. And that does mean that we've been doing these for about nine months. So the way it works is we do three sets with five rigs each, and the winners from each of those episodes come into this finals episode, and we go from there. So we're also getting very close. Of course, we're about three months away from the yearly anniversary for this series, and I'm getting pretty excited on that. If you guys have ideas on how we can celebrate it, let me know in the comment section below. In this series, we focus on pretty much GPU mining rigs and just the rigs themselves. So single rigs, if you'd like to submit, you can at either emailing submissions at sonofatech.com or heading on over to the website at sonofatech.com and clicking the submit your rig button. And if you guys would please participate by clicking the I up in the corner and voting for your favorite rig of every week, that would be awesome. This also runs in a playlist, which I'll link up here underneath the poll, and you can go watch all the previous back episodes to catch up and get some good ideas on building mining rigs or at least GPU mining rigs. Without further ado, let's get into the finals episode nine. There we go. Welcome back. So the winner from episode 26 was Overkill by Corey. If you want to vote for it, you can vote for Rig A up in the corner. He's rocking the Mint Cell Titan 8 case with the Asus Prime Z270P motherboard and i5 something he states. I guess it was in a package deal with that motherboard. A Samsung SSD uh, and four sticks of four gigabytes for the Corsair 3600 DDR4, which I mentioned before is way overkill. In the comment section below, of course, he did say yeah it was overkill but he already had it i think i think he had to pay like close to 300 dollars for it though that kit's a super nice kit i'd love to see it in a gaming rig just kind of thoughts there he's got eight evga 1080 ti for the win three editions and eight mint cell six pin power pcie risers and two mint cell m.2 pcie risers with two evga supernova 1600 watt power supplies to keep all those 1080 ti's fed his total hash rate on on Equahash is 6.2 kilosolutions a second. The winner from episode 27 is TBD. I think the only suggestion we had in the comments, and maybe you guys can leave some more down there, was Woody. And hopefully we can get this named for Derek, who's the owner of this rig. And he's rocking the MSI Z270A Pro with a Intel Pentium G4400. So welcome to the G4400 Club. We're about to move on to the G5400 Club though because we have been testing it over here and we have new motherboards and new Pentiums. These are the Pentium Golds. We'll go later, go into more detail in later videos on that. But he's also rocking eight gigabytes of DDR4, the Corsair Vengeance 2400 megahertz, a Western Digital 500 gigabyte drive that he had laying around, a Corsair HX1000i, two XFX RX 580 XXX editions, two XFX RX 580 black editions, and a homemade open air wood chassis integrating an old case fan for uh, parts mounting. So he did, you can see on here, actually use part of a, a an actual case on the back side of this, which I didn't notice in the first time, uh, that's holding some of the fans up and so on and so forth, and also allows him to mount one of those GPUs in an actual PCI slot, which is neat. Uh, clever way of doing that for sure. His total hash rate is 118 mega hash a second on Ethereum. Finally, the winner of episode 28, which was last week, was Wall Heater by Roberto. If you'd like to vote for this one, you can vote for Rig C up in the poll. And he's rocking six RX 580 8GB XFX XXX editions with, once again, an Intel Pentium G4400 the Gigabyte GA H110 D3A motherboard, the 006 and a mix of 007 PCIe risers, the Senti 1050 watt power supply, so 1050 watt power supply. I, I, I didn't quite mess it up as bad this time around saying that. 
4 gigabytes of Kingston 2133 megahertz memory and an old 80 gigabyte SATA drive for the operating system. He's running Claymore single miner, so he's not dual mining on that at 187 mega hash a second. The GPU core clock is at 1165 megahertz at 800 millivolts and the GPU memory clock is at 2250 megahertz at 900 millivolts. Going back through these, I've always had issues getting above 2200 on the memory, so I am impressed that he did get a little bit more than that. Of course, I have messed with the XFX cards and the Sapphire cards. Uh, both of those are kind of my go-to for the RX series. I would definitely recommend one of those two. Moving to something like Asus or MSI doesn't seem to be quite as good because you can get the XFX and the Sapphires with the dual BIOS for about the same or similar prices that you can get other GPUs that don't actually have that feature. And for mining that feature, is a welcome addition for sure. Looking at rig TBD, I have almost no complaints here. You could go down to a four gig stick, but it's a single eight gig stick, probably part of a package deal that he purchased. So he can put the other stick into maybe, I don't know, another mining rig, of course. That would be the only actual complaint other than a 500 gigabyte hard drive. All you really need here these days, guys, is a $7 USB key to load simple mining or hive onto and call it a day. It's gonna save you some money. It's also going to reduce the amount of space you need on your rig. He could have compacted this rig a little bit more, of course, by not having that hard drive sitting there mounted on the bottom of the frame. And then finally, rig A overkill. I mean, we're talking about some rads going down. We're talking about essentially an open air frame with water cooled 1080 Ti's on here. So the longevity of the cards is going to be pretty good. The only thing you really are gonna have to worry about is the water pumps dying and just keeping a temperature monitor on there so it'll send off and let you know when those go up. Of course, if they die, these cards still do have fans, so it shouldn't burn up or anything along those lines. You should be able to get to it fast enough, but that would be my biggest worry. I've never been a huge fan of the kind of all-in-one solutions on either your CPU or your GPU and replacing it can be cost prohibitive. Of course, you know, you could just always throw a water block on there, but you're gonna be talking about spending another $200 on the block alone. Then you're gonna to have to go through buying another radiator, pumps, so on and so forth. So it can be a little rough. Of course, this rig is called Overkill, so we're gonna let him get away with that and get away with 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDR4 because just awesome. So I would also like to see this in some sort of rendering farm. It looks like it would do really, really well in a render farm uh, situation. So something along the lines of like get some blender numbers or so on. That would be super cool if you could, Corey, and just hit us up in Discord. If anybody else wants to hop in Discord, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. That's going to wrap up this week's episode of Rig Wars. So I did want to say thanks for voting for me on the Crypto Influence Awards. We did take home the, uh, what is this? The, the thumbnail thing, that was pretty cool. Thanks to Adam and everybody that coordinated that over in New York City, it was pretty cool. Met a lot of people, so if you're new to the channel, this is kind of the weekly episode. Don't forget to tune back in, hit the subscription button, and hit the notification bell so you know when my videos go up. But it's 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that would be 7 p.m. Eastern or the 4 o'clock uh, Pacific Time, and that's every Saturday for Mining Rig Wars, so for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I will see you next Tuesday.